<laughs> What's going on, man? How you doing? Good. It's good to see you again. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you have a fight coming up, so. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. How's your day going so far? Uh, mine's good. Thank you for asking. Uh, but more importantly, how, how are you doing and how are you feeling? Man, it's been a, it's been a, a really good camp, uh, considering that I was injured off my last camp. So I basically, I basically went right back into my camp. So, uh, I feel like I'm, it's bad. I feel like it's going back. It's good. Like camp to camp almost, you know, besides having that injury. So to me, it's just been like, I'm more than prepared and just kind of excited for this, for this next month coming up for this fight. Cause it could be a pretty big one. Yeah, I do want to touch upon that. Um, but w- with your with your foot injury, uh, you said that you went right back into like like fight camp. Um, how long did you? How long was it until you uh, got back on your feet and started training? I was out for a whole month. I was out for basically three weeks, and in the last week, I still had some pain on my foot, and uh, had pain in my foot, like nerve damage from like the bottom of my toe. But I was right back to camp basically right after that. So I was basically out for a total of like three weeks. And then on the fourth week, I was able to get back on the mat and start moving around and do some like slow movements. And then after that, I was pretty much good to go. It was just kind of getting through that pain. The first like kind of like pain off the first couple of weeks after yeah. getting back on my foot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess like with certain fighters, when you when once you injure something once, you can have that. You, you, you know, you can be uh, acceptable to having uh, the same injury again. It does happen. Um, so is there anything that you and your team have worked on to kind of help prevent that or anything that you've done to kind of protect that foot? Um, it wasn't so much of an injury like that. It was an injury. It was an injury that like involved stitches. Oh, okay. So, like, it wasn't, like, a normal injury. Like, you would have, like, let's say a sprained ankle or something like that. It was it was just an injury that involved, uh, uh, like I said, it was just, uh, like, stitches. And uh, so it wasn't, like, so much of an injury that's going to keep me reoccurred besides just kind of, like, being easy on my foot. Yeah, um, I didn't really get to see much about how you got that, uh, how you got the injury. How, what What exactly happened? Um, it, it, I went for an up kick on one of my teammates and, uh, he wasn't wearing a mouth guard. So the bottom of my, like my peaky toe where like the pivot point is went into his mouth and, uh, actually just gashed the shit out of my foot. <laughs> and, uh, that's basically what happened. It was just super like tragic, if anything. So you tell him like next time, like you better wear a mouth guard, man. <laughs> yeah, after that happened, my coach had pretty much talked to everybody like, hey, if you don't have a mouth guard, you're not allowed to step on the mat, you know? So that's basically what happened with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, now, I do want to move on. Uh, Terrence, McKenna, uh, Terrence McKinney, uh, you know, you, you, since you got in the UFC, really, your whole career, you've fought in a lot of tough guys, top guys, especially when you got in the UFC, you've been fighting nothing but top guys. I mean, you fought a huge veteran, like, for uh, you know first day out um i mean like looking at all these guys does it, do you feel like that kind of helps you build as a fighter versus maybe the alternative uh having maybe easier fights they would say um you know what yeah i think that uh considering the fights that they're giving me it says a lot about you know how they see me as a fighter you know, I know they have these guys they try to build up, so maybe they don't give them as top, like, you know, top guys like they gave me Jim, giving me Jim Miller with the most wins in the UFC and the most experience, in my opinion, um, coming out of the lightweight division. And I'm the guy that just had, you know, 19 fights prior to that, and he was my 20th. And not that I didn't have experience, but this says a lot about, you know, uh, maybe they're just trying to throw me a, a tough guy and uh see how i do and then if i do good you know what i'm saying then they're going to try to build me up more um and on having to be my second fight would have been Devontae smith was actually was a really good all-around fighter himself um unfortunately for him you know he got cut after his last fight and now they're giving me terrence mckinney which is another highlight kind of guy another tough dude up and coming has a lot of noise had a lot has a lot of momentum and uh, i think that uh it's only going to help my career once i get a win once i get this next win um considering all the noise and I know I'm going to be the huge underdog in this fight. You know, a lot of these people are like fans 
you know, unless you're like a full on, like full on MMA nerd and you do research about a fighter, they'll understand that, you know, I'm not an easy task. I'm not an easy fighter to get through. I bring a lot of fight. I bring a lot of entertainment, a lot of excitement, and I'm very durable. Um, especially when I'm coming off a full, a full fight camp, which makes me the most durable because I am the most composed. I have everything set up perfectly. I've had, I'm weight dropping perfectly. I'm training like I'm supposed to. It's not like a 10 day notice where I had to cut 24 pounds uh, for a fight. Um, basically like in nine days because it's the day before weigh-in. So, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff, variables that went into that last fight, my first debuts and considering to now where it's a full camp where people will see the full, de- the full effect of the ghost pepper. Yeah. I think you, we, you mentioned that last time when, uh, when we had this, when we chatted, it was actually for your upcoming fight with Devontae Smith, um, you know, talking about having a full camp. It, I think a lot of fans are excited to see um, not just you fighting, a guy like Terrence McKinney, but seeing you at uh, your full potential, your full camp, no injuries, like everything coming all together for you. Um, looking at an opponent like Terrence McKinney, when you had to sign that dotted line, were you like, like when that name was thrown to you, were you like, oh yeah, let's go? Or like, how, how did you react to that? Um, I was actually super excited. Uh, my coach, like the way the, he was kind of like, he was like, oh, it's going to be a tough fight. Went in after watching footage over and over and over. Um, you know, we realized this is actually the perfect fight for me. Um, the way he fights is, is not going to be able to withstand the way I fight. You know, I'm a dog fighter. I like to, I like to bring to walk forward and, uh, and I don't, I just, I don't guess, I don't guess out, man. I don't get tired. So I think that uh, that's going to help a lot in this fight. But, you know, when I did sign that contract, I was super excited. Um, the more momentum that someone has, the better for me, you know, it's only going to jump. It's gonna only going to catapult me to the top. And uh, whether they, whatever, whoever they gave me afterwards, it won't matter. I'll, I have a couple names I want to call out, but I won't say that here. I'm going to wait, worry about this fight only, and then we'll go from there. Well, and you, you talk about uh, cardio being your arsenal. And with Terrence McKinney, you know, he has a lot of those kind of flashy knock because he's had some good highlight reels. Do you feel like that's kind of where the factor is in that fight? That's where you're going to expose his weakness? Uh, yeah, you know, I think that he's so caught up in these little uh, after his debut, which, you know, all the power to him. I got much respect for him. Hell of a knockout. It's fucking beast. Almost knocked out Drew Dober, too. Um, you know, but it, 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 um, I think that he's so stuck on getting a highlight reel now and just these short finishes because most of his fights in career and his career are first round finishes. Um, So I think he's just stuck in the idea and uh, I've been through fights. I've had three fights in one night. I've had fights that go went by quick. My debut as a pro is a 26 second knockout, you know? So I have that power as much as he does, but you know, I just think that uh, his flashiness is going to be his biggest mistake. And uh, I hope that he comes more prepared than just flashy kicks and a lot of power and, you know, a lot of uh, wasted energy because uh, he's going to need it for sure. I mean, you know, you're, you're, uh, you, you both both have put on really good fights. Uh, does this have fight of the night written all over it? Maybe maybe a different alternative uh, outcome here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a bonus at the end waiting for me. So, I mean, I know I have that waiting for me, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind. It's already like and you know embedded in my head how I want to start this fight and how I want to finish this fight. Um, so to me, it's just going to be uh, it's just going to be a bonus at the end of the fight, regardless. You know, you kind of talked about uh, previously about uh, calling out uh, other fighters. I know you, you, you wouldn't obviously call it anybody here, but um, are, are you kind of looking to call it someone in like the top 20, top 15? Is that where your mind is at uh, when you do happen to do that? You know, man, um, I think a lot of fighters try to go up to the ranks as fast as they can. Um, I look at a lot of these different fighters and uh, – I think the more fights I have before I hit the ranks is going to be better. So to me, I'm not really looking to, to hit the top ranks right away. Um, I'm 30 years old, man, you know, so give me like another two, one, another couple of years. And uh, I want to fight as many fighters as I can. And then if they happen to give me someone in the top ranks in the, in the process or whatever, then I'll take it. It's, I'm not, you know, I'm a yes guy. I don't like to say no to fights. And uh, I have no hesitation. And I'm not scared of anybody. So to me, it's... Uh, I'm going to try to get as many non-ranked fighters as I can, get my pay grade up as fast as high as I can. And then once those, uh, those big, big fights want to start coming my way, then, you know, we can start renegotiating into bigger numbers. Cause, uh, 
you know, I want to make sure I get paid as much as good as uh, is is uh, if I'm going to be fighting these top ranked fighters, why would I not want to get paid the most as much money as I can? Right, right. And uh, and, and with this fight happening in August, um, you know, it, it would appear that you want to stay active. So, do you think like another fight would uh, would fit in at the end of the year, or where where would your mindset be at? Uh, depending on how this fight goes, if I come out injury free and I'm ready to go, I want to get back in there in October, November, either one. I want to hit there before either, uh, another one, definitely before the fight, before the year ends, no doubt. Um, it's getting going back to back, um, depending on how that one goes, you know, I just want to get in there every two months, every three months if possible. Excellent. Excellent. And I mean, uh, after the fight, I, I know you're staying focused for the fight, but I mean, I, I think every fighter looks forward to it. A cheat meal after your fight, what's your go-to cheat meal and what would be your, what, or is there anything that you're craving after this fight? Um, honestly, I just want a lot of tacos, <laughs> a lot of tacos and the and Mexican food, man. That's what I'm going to be craving, but I'm honestly, I actually, I've been wanting to, I want my cheat meal, my, like my meal after my fight, after get after this all goes down i want to i want to actually want to try a tomahawk so that's actually what i'm aiming for after this fight yeah what like about a, is a that like a tomahawk yeah is that like a i would assume that's a mexican restaurant no a tomahawk is just like a big piece of steak you know what i'm saying like those big oh, old like the big tomahawk steaks that they cook i want to eat one of those i want to get one of those going because i've never had one it's something i always wanted to try yeah that, that'd be pretty tasty that'd be pretty tasty um, now that being said, uh, you, you do want to fight, uh, maybe have one more fight then the year. Um, are you like, depending on in, in injury free, would you be open to, uh, a last minute fight or is that something that you're trying to avoid now? Like what, like, where's your mindset at? I want to at least have like a two month notice. Um, you know, but, uh, depending on how this fight goes, like I said, if I'm injury free and, um, I'm injury free and I have nothing work, nothing uh, going wrong with me. I'm going to be just staying on weight. So at this point, I'm not afraid of a, I'm not going to be opposed to a short notice fight uh, to me. Um, just due to the fact that I'm going to be in shape all year round now. Um, when I got that call with Jim Miller, I was coming off an injury on my ink, on my toe. I had fractured my toe. Uh, I had a hairline fracture. So that's the reason I was uh, out of, out of, out of, you know, out of uh, my weight. And I normally am, which is, you know, 175. 180 um i was walking around like 184 185 so i was like super super heavy and uh that's the reason i had trouble like you know uh, with that weight cut <clears throat> otherwise i would have been fine and been able to been in fight camp already i would have been in fight shape and it would have been fine so to me uh, after this fight no doubt um i'm gonna be just kind of staying low on my weight keeping ready and if a short notice happens to present itself then i'm gonna take it man because uh it's a fight game, man. If you say say no, then you you know you start getting your back turned on you. So just say yes, keep fighting, and fight fucking everybody. You know, in your division, in the lightweight division, things are kind of up in the air in that in that title picture at the moment. Uh, you know, you got Islam uh, Makayev and uh, and you got DeBronx there. Do you feel like Makayev should get that title shot uh, based upon who he's fought? In? And if it isn't him, who what, what kind of matchup do you think the UFC is going to make? I think Makayev and, uh, and uh, the Bronx is the fight to make, man. Um, the Bronx wants money, man, so that's why he's waiting around for Connor or whoever the fuck he's doing. <laughs> but I think Makayev and uh, the Bronx is going to be the fight to do, in my opinion. I think they should have that as a title fight, set that one up, fuck all the other bullshit, you know, if, uh, and then go from there. Because um, it is a vacant title technically right now. They, they, they think they just need to fill that spot up. And uh, I think giving it to Chandler, or I know Chandler was trying to do a call out against Makayev uh, for the title because uh, saying uh, about Bronx waiting around, you know, for McGregor or whatever. I think that Bronx, you know, is, is, is still the reigning champ in that division and, and uh, he proved it the last fight. Um, so it was kind of like a weird situation that happened, that entire the weigh-ins and all that stuff. But I think Makayev and the Bronx would be the way to do it, man. I think they should just Set that one in. Makayev is what on a ten fight win streak right now. So yeah, he's cool. he's fun. He's had quite a few fights where he's yeah. Oh, I like, think it's about ten fights. I mean, it only it only makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if they were to like give Connor something like that, uh, how do you feel the rest of the UFC roster would react? Other than there's only so much you can do. We can you can be happy or you can't be happy about it, but like, how do you feel the rest of the roster react and what kind of backlash do you think that could 
put on the company if that does happen again? Um, I think the roster would be a little, a little bit more upset because uh, Conor McGregor hasn't won a fight in a while. You know, um, whether he broke his leg or not, you fucking lost the fight. It's doctor stoppage or not, you lost the fucking fight. You know, you have him, he hasn't won in like what, like three, four years, I want to say, <laughs> somewhere around there. Um, and uh, I think that it, uh, it'd be more of a joke and it would kind of be kind of a slap to the face for the fighters in the roster. So it'd be, I think the fighters, the lower, the fighters that don't, aren't as big would make more of a fuss about it. I think the top fighters themselves, like the top 10 guys don't, wouldn't really care because to them, they're just probably going to see it as an easy fight for them considering that's what's going on with McGregor. He hasn't really been in his prime like he was in the 145 division. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that uh, the top fighters would be more excited because that's a big payday for them anyways. So I think the lower ranked fighters are going to be like, ah, it's kind of bullshit, you know? Um, But then again, our opinions don't matter. So (laughs) we only have opinions, but they're just, they're they're not going to make a difference in the company or, whatsoever until we make our own hype until we make our own noise and 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 just kind of end here uh i know that you're focused on your fight but do you have any other plans like outside fighting do you have anything that you that you're looking to accomplish this year do you have any other like uh social plans uh plan just life plans in general um you know um i'm actually just been kind of focusing more on my uh on my streaming for video gaming so it's been getting a little bit more popular on Twitch and stuff like that. So I'm kind of just focusing up on that. Other than that, man, i um, starting to plan and get, uh, my my wedding, hopefully within the next year. Or so that I got that to look forward to as far as life, you know, um, and uh, getting my dog into some uh, some sort of a train dog training academy just to get her because I have a, I just recently got a Belgian Malinois. She's a very smart dog. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of like those little things that I have planned and I'm kind of focusing on right now. Wedding being like the big one, just cause, uh, weddings ain't cheap. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're not, they're not cheap. <laughs> um, that, now that being said, uh, have you talked to Max Holloway at all? Have you been able to reach out to him? Maybe you can do some kind of online thing going on with him, with the gaming. I haven't. Cause you know, I actually play like a certain game, um, and he plays like uh, I think he plays like Apex and Call of Duty. And I don't really play those games. I play like a it's like a it's a Russian based game, Escape from Tarkov, and not many people play that game because it's not like a not like a mainstream game. I would say it's, it's starting to become a mainstream game in, in a way, sense of way. Um, but no, nah, I haven't reached out to like really any fighters for the most part. I've played with Chase Hooper. Um, I think Adrian Yanez, uh, he wanted to he wanted to run some Apex at one point, but we never got around to it. But other than that, man, it's kind of just been like I've been running with a lot of like top streamers, top top gamers that uh, that like uh, like playing with the athletes, you know. So that's always been super fun. If the UFC uh, adds you into their in their video game, would you start streaming that? I would. I don't even play fighting games. You know, I used to as a kid. Like the, uh, I, but I never got into UFC, man. I just wasn't into the mechanics of it, of like the way to roll around and play and do it on a, on a, on a controller and shit just wasn't my thing. Um, I'd rather play like soccer, like FIFA or some shit like that. <laughs> it's weird that that sounds. I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Eric, I, I don't want to take any more of your time. I know you're a busy man with your, with your fight camp. So I just want to pre- say again, I appreciate you taking your time. Uh, to come on here and let me interview you here and uh, good luck with your your fight with Terrence McKinney thank you man I appreciate that man thank you for having me back on the show